Hello and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella. Today's conversation is a continuation of a chat we had on episode 40, focusing on 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 18. So if you'd like to get the most out of this episode, I'd recommend going back and listening to that one first. Right now, though, let's get into today's episode. Better is the poor man who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. Proverbs 19.1 from The Message. Once again, I have the lovely Sharon here with me. Sharon works for Celebrate Messiah. It's an organization connecting Jewish Christians together all over Australia. And you can visit them at celebratemessiah.com.au. Sharon, so good to have you again. Good to be back with you today, Joey. <laughs> Today's verse is is straightforward. <laughs> Um, and and Proverbs does that a lot. It calls people wise and then it calls people a fool. And it really makes things black and white. And I think in a world, especially today, where things can get really muddy really quickly, Proverbs, I feel, um, just stands out. <laughs> yeah, it cuts through, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. What are your first thoughts of this particular verse? Well, it is black and white, as you said, and it speaks very clearly to me that it's best to have a right relationship with God. It's better than anything else. Mm. So our integrity is more important to God than, and it should be more important to us, um, than our wealth. And on a human level too, if we think about our reputation, it's more important than our wealth. If we think we can fool around with our reputations and get away with it, we're kidding ourselves. Oh yeah, reputation. One of the hardest things to build and in an instant... Oh, yeah. Can be gone. And I, I think that's my first impression of this verse as well. Proverbs 19, 1. Better is the poor man who walks in integrity. Talks about the fact that it doesn't ma- I mean, money, of course, is something we, we need, but not at the cost of your integrity, not at the cost of a good reputation um, that you have. So those are my first thoughts. Um, what does this verse tell you about who God is or what he values? Yeah, well, just to put it in context, this verse is an exact, almost an exact copy of another verse in Proverbs about better to be poor and have integrity than to be perverse and rich. So it's contrasting on the one hand, people who are poor but have a right relationship with God uh, versus those who are rich but are not in a right relationship with God. And so they're fools. They're kidding themselves. And I'm just thinking of that that poor widow um, who put in those two small coins in the offertory box. Remember that story? I don't remember where it's from. Yeah, so just a quick one. If you haven't heard the story before, um, Jesus tells, uh, he's sort of teaching his disciples a lesson on generosity. And he says there's a story of a, um, a widow who puts these two small cents, I suppose, like the smallest unit you can think of in whatever currency you use, putting two of those, and how that is worth so much more than the rich man who puts in thousands and thousands because for her that cost everything yeah so that's a bit of a backstory of of that particular story in the bible that's right so she gave more than all the rich people why because she was in a right relationship with god she loved God more than she loved her money and so she gave extravagantly Mm. and you know jesus often cans the rich Uh, It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter God's kingdom, etc. Now, I don't know about you, but I do a fair bit of cross-stitch, and it's hard enough for me, even with my glasses on, to put that thread through that needle. And just imagining that huge, hairy, fat camel and trying to squeeze that in, (laughs) obviously it's hilarious. So, But Jesus also had rich friends. He had quite a few of them, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, Joseph of Arimathea, It's not wealth that bothers God. It's our attitude to it. Mm. Do we love our money more than we love God? Mm. And that's a question you listening can, and we ourselves as well, we all can ask ourselves. Absolutely. Do we love money more than we love God? Love what you said earlier, that it's not wealth itself that bothers God. Because Jesus had loaded friends (laughs) and he also had friends who had basically nothing. And he didn't split them up according to that. It was more about their heart and their intention. But also 
there's the reality, and I come from four generations worth of um, people working in Christian ministry. I mean, for my father and my grandfather, my great grandfather, it was people who had great wealth, but also had a great heart for God, that when they partnered with ministries and organizations, that all of a sudden so many more things could be achieved. But in the same way, when there isn't that money flowing through, when there isn't that generosity, then no matter how good a cause is, it can only go to a certain point. And of course, God can do great miracles and he can make a way. But often his preferred method is to use people yeah, and absolutely. to encourage them to be generous and, and to give and to give from the right place. Yeah. Has this verse come alive in your own life? Yeah, I love the way you said that God encourages encourages us to give from the right place because, and this story is really not about me, it's about God and it's about me having just enough insight and courage to let God's love work in my life. Mm. So sometimes he does, he gives us the courage to love him more than anything else. Mm. So in that space where we're looking at our lives through his eyes, we can be really generous. So when COVID struck, it's, this is a COVID story, when it just, when the skies were closing and there were shutdowns and people were panicking and nobody knew what was coming next. So there was a lot of fear. Uh, my husband and I made a decision that we really needed to support a missionary family we'd been supporting for years. We didn't know if they were going to be supported by anyone else Mm. and we did not want their ministry to fail. So we decided to donate my entire income for that year to them. Wow. Yeah, we needed to keep them afloat. This was a very important family. We'd been important to us, supporting them for about 20 odd years. Mm. Now, that's not to say we're anything special, Joy, because we're really not. We just had enough courage to look at their life through God's eyes and that inspired us to be generous. So yeah, God's God's like that. God is good. Mm -hmm. He can enable us to do good things when we look at when we have integrity yeah. and allow him to work through us. Mm. There's something about releasing money. There's something about trusting God in that area that just opens doors, that just creates so many ripples of change. When you made this decision to support this missionary family and and thereby quite literally just saying, God, we trust you in this area. We are putting our relationship with you above wealth. Were there any flow on effects that year? Well, financially we were poorer, but hey, we got through, Mm. which was amazing. And so, yes, we went without, but then so did other people. And yes, we couldn't go on that holiday, but then you couldn't anyway. And just, just it didn't really unbalance us. We got through. We had less, okay. They got through and that was the most important thing. So nothing amazing happened to us. We weren't suddenly, we didn't win Tats Lotto. We didn't win a car. We didn't suddenly find a pot of gold at the bottom of the garden. Although I should keep digging. <laughs> you, never you never know. You never know. Nothing amazing happened except that we had this amazing privilege of living and trusting God and living with God on a more daily basis. We had to rely on him more closely. And just to have that quiet confidence that because we were walking with integrity before God, we were blessed with his closeness and blessed with his presence. I, I believe I was far more blessed than, uh, than the couple we were supporting with mere money. We were blessed with a relationship, a closer walk with God. Full disclosure. When I asked Sharon that last question about things that have happened in her life as a result of her choosing to give financially, I was expecting a story of some amazing display of financial blessing. I don't know, like maybe a house would pop up or maybe she got a great job or something like that. And I was kind of stumped when she said that actually nothing really changed except the fact that they got closer to Jesus. And I realized that, yeah, you know, on some deep level, this is something I have to work on. Because some part of me still believes that when I choose to serve God financially, 
it's somehow a down payment for a later financial return. That if I give God my money now for a ministry or a cause of some kind, he's going to give that back to me tenfold. But there's such a trap in that way of thinking. Talking to myself here as well, because I guess it just sets me up for disappointment. Because I was never really giving out of the goodness of my heart. I was never really giving out of a heart of worship and service. I was giving so that I could get something back. And that's today's application on the Everyday Joy podcast. It's to focus on that last bit of the conversation, although there are so many things we could focus on today. But it's to really challenge and ask ourselves, when we give towards a cause, when we are generous, are we holding God to account in some way? Are we holding him to some kind of expectation that we have around a financial blessing in return? Or do we need to just be grateful that we actually get to partner with him, that that is the blessing, that that's the return, just to be able to partner with God? And what a blessing that is. Definitely some food for thought on today's episode. The Everyday Joy podcast, of course, will be back Monday next week. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episodes with Sharon. And if you've got any feedback for her, if any episode has really connected with you, flick through an email to everydayjoy at positivemedia.com.au and the link to that is posted below in the description. Don't forget to leave a five-star review if you haven't already. I'll catch up with you next week.